Okay, so this is problem 48, uh, my final video walkthrough for the um, 50 Diffie-Q posts. Um, this one's a Laplace transform, and the way we can tell, um, first of all, it helps to know that we have boundary or initial conditions, um, because those are necessary in the formula for the Laplace transform. But we also know that we have a Dirac um, situated in our equation, and that gives us a pretty good clue um, that we're going to want to Laplace transform this. Because in um, transform space, this is very simple, and it's a lot easier to see our solution for that. So we're going to take the Laplace transform of both sides. Um, so we would take it of this side and of this side. So what that looks like is for y double prime, this is our solution. I'm using s as the transform variable and y as the transformed um, solution, uppercase y. So um, you'll find this either in a table or if you eventually will have it memorized. Um, but this is what y double prime becomes. So that's that. Now plus 2y prime, we also have a formula for that. It becomes pretty simple, um, at least in our new space. That's times the um, transform variable times uppercase y, and then minus our initial value for y. Now <clears throat> the normal y just becomes a y. <laughs> but it's now our transformed y, not a lowercase y. And the Dirac potential is very easy um, function. We, um, we take e and then to the negative whatever this argument is times s. So we have minus 5s. Those are going to look really similar. Um, that's our transformed version. Now this is also the Dirac of t minus 5. Either way you could write it. Um, this notation means it's zero or it's infinite when the argument inside is five. You could also say that it's the Dirac of t minus five. And that means that whenever the argument is zero, um, that's when that function turns on and then it's gone for every other value. But either way, this is the um, transformed version. You'll be able to find that in a table too. Um, so next what we do is we FOIL this out or at least uh, expand it and collect our terms. Um, that one stays as it is. We know that y naught is 2, so we plug that in, 2s. This is why you need initial conditions for the Laplace transform. Um, it's representable by an integral expression, and you need the bounds on that integral to know um, exactly what it looks like. y prime naught is negative 1, so minus negative 1 is plus 1. Um, same thing here, distributing plus 2sy, and then plus 2 because it's minus 2y naught, which is negative 1 plus y. And that equals e to the minus 5s. All right, um, so now we collect all of our terms and we solve for uppercase y. You do the algebra on that, and you split it into um, as many groups as are possible. So we would normally get um, this e to the minus 5s, and then we have, um, we send this 2 over, this 1 over there, and this 2s over there. And so we have all that divided by s squared plus 2s plus 1. And then um, I'm going to write it in a, a way that's going to help us later by just... Um, so this 2s was brought over here. This minus 3 comes from 2 and 1. And then um, that's those two. And then plus e to the minus 5s. And then I'm just going to distribute this denominator across both of these. So dividing by s squared plus 2s um, plus 1. And same thing here. Okay. Um, and you can do that algebra and see we're just collecting terms and dividing it over. So that is our um, transform equation. So we can rewrite um, some of these in terms of, for example, we could do partial fractions if we need to. We could complete the square. There are various things that we can do. Um, so we don't need um, the Laplace transform for this right here, or the uh, completing the squares for this. Um, there's a straightforward expression for that. So we see that um, the heavy side step function with a value c, and this is available on any table, times some function of t. The conversion for that is e to the minus cs times the Laplace transformed uh, g with this argument. 
this is again available on any table that you might come across and so um, if we identify this portion right here one over that as the g of s and we see that this is the exponential that we want and that this whole thing um, so let's call this exponential just the um, e of s and then let's call h of s the product this times this and that's the transformed version so h of s is um, e of s times g of s um, then you'll see on your table that this matches up perfectly to this where g is that thing that we're multiplying by e so um, we can rewrite in real space the inverse Laplace transform of this product h of t is from right here we're just taking the heavy side step function value c and that c is 5 because it's in our exponential you'll notice it's minus cs so c is positive 5 so this in real space becomes um, that times g of t now we're calling s this value right here centered at zero and so we can replace t here since it's just a dummy variable with for example t minus c so then this becomes here uh, like this and now this is t minus five so the way that we can write that is then <clears throat> multiplying um, or uh, taking this function right here at t minus five we're just switching the uh, zero around so g of t minus five now what is g well we know that g is the inverse Laplace transform of uppercase g where uppercase g is <clears throat> as we define it here one over s squared plus two s plus one um, we have a general expression for that the inverse Laplace transform this is on any table um, and you'll see n's and so on if I let n equal one I get 1 factorial over s plus 1 squared. If I remember right, it's n plus 1 in the denominator or something. But this is a formula on your table where n equals 1 and a equals negative 1 um, for this 1 right here. Um, the inverse Laplace transform of this is t to the, I believe, n, which is just 1 in this case, times e to the a t. So we can right that is t to the um, t times e to the minus t so now we have that h of t just from our uh, table value right here is the um, heavy side at 5 and now the um, formula for that is times t minus 5 times e to the minus t minus 5 why this and this because we're using t but we rewrote it in terms of t minus 5. And if you'll see your table, um, you can see why that is. g is in terms of t plus c. But we don't have a t plus c here. So we're just going to rewrite this dummy index in terms of t minus 5. So this just becomes t. But now we have to change it over here too. And that becomes t minus 5. So now t goes to t minus 5, e to the minus t. And like I say, if you look on the table and plug this in, you'll see that you then get g of t plus 5. t plus 5 eliminates this 5, and you get just s's in here, which is what we want. So this is um, one half of it, this half right here. So we'll remember um, that value, and I'll recall it later, just so I have enough room. Um, so let's get rid of that, and I'll write that part down later. h is the inverse Laplace transform of this one half. And then um, we have the other half to do. So let's just call that other half um, f of s, uppercase f. We're just doing that to keep all of our terms straight. Um, so this one we use partial fractions on, so we can break it up into simple um, exponential um, expressions in real space. Um, so we see that 2s minus 3, so let's do partial fractions on this. Factoring the denominator, we see it's s plus 1 squared. When we have a square term, not a, a um, second order, but an actual square of a binomial or more. We have to actually, to get this to turn out correctly, we have to write it like this. We use one constant on the numerator for each power of the denominator. 
and that allows us to get a square cross term like we need. Um, and so finding the common denominator here, this is a s plus a, just multiplying this one by an s plus one. And then this one is already at the common denominator, plus b, all over s plus one squared. So I just multiplied this fraction by s plus one. So we see that this is already equal to this, so this equals this. Um, so our powers of s, we only have a here, so a equals two. We can see that pretty straightforward. Since that's the only power of s, or uh, coefficient of s here, this is the only one here. So now we're left with this portion, minus three equals two plus b. And so b equals minus five. All right, so we can um, deconstruct this um, fraction back here in terms of, so let's call f of s, and that is now equal to 2 over s plus 1 minus 5 over s plus 1 squared. Now we consult our table again, and we see that this is a really straightforward transformation. What we always want to do is take, if it's just a scalar, um, that numerator and plop it in front. because this is the actual thing that we're looking for. And so you'll see on your table that this, um, when we take the inverse Laplace transform of this, we get that lowercase f of t is equal to 2e to the minus t minus 5t e to the minus t. So these leading coefficients end up in front. And then 1 over s plus 1 transforms into this, and 1 over s plus 1 squared transforms into t e to the minus t. You get that extra term there. Um, that's just right from the table. So um, this is our other one right here. This is the other half of our inverse. So now let's write that out more fully um, to find the net equation. So we see that y of t, our, our total solution, is equal to the inverse Laplace transform. This is what we already did of uppercase y of s. So this and this, and we can distribute it. It's additive, so it becomes just inverse transforming each part. So lowercase f of t plus lowercase h of t, and this is equal to everything that we got before. So that's the uh, t e to the minus t, where t goes to t minus five for that table formula to be exact. And then um, what we found later, two e to the minus t, minus 5t e to the minus t. So this right here is our final solution. Um, that's y of t. So I think the most, uh, the, the trickiest part is this right here, why we go to t minus 5. And that just boils down to, looking at the table, you'll see that formula that I wrote um, to generically inverse Laplace transform something. u of c, u c t um, times g of t, that gets transformed from e to the minus cs times uppercase g, our transformed variable of t plus c. So like I say, we can substitute t goes to t minus c. It's a dummy variable. We're just reassigning the zero point. So that one becomes that, and this becomes t minus 5. So now we plug in t minus 5 into whatever g is. You can see g is just this denominator here. Um, and so when we inverse Laplace transform this g, that's where we get um, what we got before, this t e to the minus t. So now we just plug in t minus 5 there instead. The Heaviside step function um, we can write as t or uh, u5, or you could think if we plugged in t minus 5 here, that becomes 0 at 5. So either way, the algebra works out. But we just uh, copy the value of c, which is in the exponential, right in front of the u. And then we uh, do everything else we need to um, correctly inverse Laplace transform that. So this is our final solution. Um, just run through it with your table to see the algebra, especially for this. This is more straightforward because it's partial fractions. And then just um, matching the denominator up to whatever is on the table. This is the trickier one, but we need this heavy side step function because when we take the derivative or sometimes other orders of derivative of this, we see that the derivative is zero. It's infinite right here, and then it's still zero. There's no derivative here, and this is the Dirac. 
So the derivative of the heavy side step function produces the Dirac, and that's why we need it in our solution. All right, so that's uh, my last video on the 50 equation posts. This is number 48. Um, so yeah, good luck.